Hey friends, this is Jerry Robinson from JRMI.org, Jerry Robinson Ministries International. I want to thank you for uh, tuning into this brief video. Today, I wanted to just take a moment of your time and encourage you. We live in a time today where it's easy to become discouraged. There is plenty to be discouraged about when we look around the world. We look at the economic situation. We look at the geopolitical situation. Uh, situation, the global tensions that we are facing. Even here in the United States, those of us who live in the United States who are watching this video, we have our own political problems here and all kinds and all manners of complications that men cannot seem to solve. I think for those of us who are believers and those of us who are Bible believers, we can also be discouraged by the state of the church. It's very easy, in fact, to be discouraged by the state of the American church today. But there is a passage of scripture I wanted to share with you today to encourage you, to keep your eyes on the prize, so to speak, to keep you focused upon what's proper and what is fitting. In this passage of uh, scripture is found in the very first chapter of Psalms, the book of Psalms. It is Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3 that I want to focus your attention on. Let's turn there for a minute. Turn to Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3, and let's read that together. Here the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Now there is both a warning in this verse and a blessing in this verse. In fact, this verse presents to us two different paths or two different roads that are available to you and I as believers. How many of you know someone who has become so jaded by the American church or by the things going on around the world that they have simply lost hope, that they have simply lost hope? Perhaps they were once a believer. Maybe they consider themselves still to be believers but they simply don't have that joy that the Bible talks about. What we see in verse 1, it tells us there, blessed, and that's a very important word. If you desire to be blessed, listen to what this says. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now today there is a lot of ungodly counsel going on by way of the television, by way of the radio, by way of the internet, by way of many churches today, sadly, and of course through the world's uh, fashions and the world's desires and the world's ideas. However, we are told that we are blessed when we don't walk in the path of those who are ungodly, right? We don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So we want to turn to godly counsel, first of all, if we want to be blessed. This is what this verse is telling us. But notice the progression of this particular verse. It goes from uh, walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. It says, blessed is he who doesn't do that. And also, blessed is he who stands not in the way of sinners. Notice the progression from walking suddenly to standing. Friends, this is what happens whenever we begin to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Then we begin to stand in the way of sinners. We come to a halt. Now, we know that we are to be walking. We are to be moving forward. We're, we're to be walking, walking humbly with our God. And we're supposed to be moving forward at all times, pressing on toward the prize of the high calling, right, that the Apostle Paul talks about in the New Testament but certainly not a standing still. We're not told to simply stand in the way of sinners. We're certainly told to stand firm in the faith, right? 
having all we can do to stand, stand there for. Absolutely. But not in the way of sinners, right? Not in the path of sinners. And this is exactly what happens when you begin to ingest the counsel from the ungodly. Then suddenly you come to a stop and you begin to stand in the way or the path of sinners. Now notice what happens next. You move from standing in this verse to then reclining. Then you're no longer standing in the way of sinners, but then you're sitting in the seat of the scornful. So you can imagine a person who is walking in the counsel of the ungodly, who comes to stop and then stand in the way of sinners, and then who sits down and reclines in the seat of the scornful. Do you know somebody like that today? Are you that person today? Do you feel as if nothing is right? Do you feel that all hope is lost? Do you feel that the American church has lost its way? Friend, it may be tempting to think those things. And in fact, some of those things may certainly be true. However, what we do know is that if we cling to what this word says, to the law of the Lord, and we make it our delight, then we will be blessed and we will prosper. That's the promise that we find in this verse. Let's read what the rest of the verse says. It says, but his delight, this is talking about the blessed man now, his delight is in the law of the Lord. What is the law of the Lord? It is the word of God. So finding delight in the word of God and in his law does he meditate day and night. Now meditation and prayer is so powerful because what it does is it short circuits the propaganda that's all around us on a daily basis. And if you don't think there's propaganda uh, out there waiting for you, worldly propaganda, then you simply are not paying attention. Uh, and that's exactly what the propagandists hope, right? They want you to see the billboards but not realize that you're being sold. They want you to watch the television programs but not realize you're being programmed. They want you to... Uh, follow their particular programs or their particular ideas. And of course, many of these things are leading us in the way of the ungodly, ungodly counsel. So meditation allows us to bring all of the propaganda to a standstill. It allows us to gather our thoughts, to turn off the noise, and to tap in to the true revealed word of God. Here's the thing to remember. But the Bible itself is the only revealed truth in the world. Everything else cannot claim to be revealed truth. The Bible itself, the New Testament and the Old Testament, declares itself to be the revealed word of God. Therefore, when we turn off the noise from outside our doors, outside of our souls, so to speak, and we begin to focus and meditate upon the law of God, upon the words of God. The Bible says when we do that day and night, the promise comes in verse 3. That man who does that will be like a tree. Like a tree. Now, if you're a tree, if you happen to be a tree, would you want to be a tree living in the desert? Or would you rather be a tree planted by the rivers of water? Well, that's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Have you ever seen a beautiful picture of a tree sitting on the banks of a river? Its roots going down into the river itself, nourished by the streams of water that go by. That's what a blessed man is like. What is the water in this picture? Well, the water is the Word of God, and you're the tree. But if you don't have your roots in the Word of God, if you are not meditating day and night, if you are not saturated with the Word of God, and if you're not focused upon His Word and His law, then the propaganda around you is going to begin to kill or try to kill the seed of the Word of God that is in you, that living seed that tries to bear fruit. And we must not let it be choked by the ways of the world. Let's finish this verse again, and it says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper.
Friend, that's a promise for you. If you will dig into the Word of God, turn off the propaganda sometimes, and allow yourself to meditate in the Word of God, you will be blessed. That's a promise from the Bible. Thanks for letting me into your life for this brief uh, video. We'll look forward to coming back to you soon. Again, my name is Jerry Robinson from jrmi.org, jrmi.org on the web, Jerry Robinson Ministries International. We have a whole host of videos that you can watch and teachings and articles on our website going back for many years. I encourage you to go check out our website. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you.